We are about to answer a number of questions that have been sent in by our audience. Fans. The first one is from Tim Cleveland McCabe. If the saucers had a road race, what car would each of you choose to drive? A blue one. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan Peggin, do you feel that the era that this band covers, 67 to 72, is one that often gets overlooked and underappreciated due to the massive success of Dark Side or The Wall? Um, she literally just explained the point of the band in that question. That's why we did it, wasn't it? I mean, that's why yes, we put it all together. together. I, that's how, I mean, she, yes, you asked a very valid question and also answered it, is, is that, yes, this work does get overshadowed by all that other stuff, which is exactly why we're covering this period. Helen Siksek, Gary, what is your favourite song to sing? Thanks for your beautiful vocals on Fearless. Oh. Um, we know what you have to say now, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> I like Arnold Lane. Vegetable Man. I mean, that is a mouthful, but it's, it's such great fun to, to rattle through that. You know, Sid's a great storyteller. In my pasty shirt, I look a jerk, but my turquoise waistcoat is quite out of sight. But oh, oh, my haircut looks so fair. Vegetable Man, where are you? Keith Levenberg. What do you, oh, what do we have to do to get Nick to show off his vocal chops again and <laughs> scream thy last scream? <laughs> we have begged, haven't we? You have we begged. have begged, we want no, him to do it, and he won't do it. Um, you won't do it, will you? No. Is there a possibility? No, because... You the screamed, the so actually, we haven't asked him, so that's actually very basically good. Basically, um, you've screamed your last scream. Yes, they'd have to... <laughs> he has screamed his last scream. They'd have to ask me really nicely, uh, which they... Which is clearly asked. never going to happen. Yeah. Laura Morgan, how do you entertain yourselves on the road? I mean, I think the, the, there's a great spirit in the band. You know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, wit and repartee, I think. We very enjoy nice each yeah. other's company. We do enjoy, enjoy each other's, other's company. company. We're also very literate. There's a lot of reading goes on, yeah. uh, which is a fantastic. And we quite often have similar tastes, which so you can have things it's like, for instance, Gary and I will be reading the same book and he'll be 12 pages ahead of me and insist on keep reading out passages, which are four pages ahead of where I'm about to get to, thus ruining the book for me. But no, we generally have a really, really good time. It's sort of like being on a mobile book club. I have to say, we used to get, like, one of us would sneak down to a museum and just the local art gallery and then others would appear from different corners. <laughs> yeah. So in the end, we just said, well, let's just go together, shall we? Yeah. But uh, so yeah, I think so it's a bit of out culture each other. Yeah, we are, yeah, we are trying to out-culture each other all the time. Christopher Neely, what are the band's thoughts on Roger joining the band for a song in, in New York City? It was a great night I will never forget. It was great. It was, it was a great night. night. It was amazing. We absolutely yeah. loved it. It was, uh, it was quite, quite thrilling, I thought. It was um, very short notice because I'd talked to Roger a few days earlier and he'd said he'd be really happy to do something. And then he'd managed to leave his phone in a taxi, which meant that I had no con contact from him until the afternoon of the show when he said, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm coming. We'll do something. So we didn't actually rehearse. It was left to uh, a decision between all of us as to how it would work. Um, which I don't think we actually discussed with Roger. He decided to do it his own way anyway. Well, we sort of talked it t through with him, didn't we, just before? Yeah, very briefly. Yeah, but we'd, yeah, we'd already, yeah, we'd already decided how we were doing it. But the great thing is he did, Roger did make the terrible mistake of trying to get one up on the professor, because Lee had said when he first played New York, and Roger tried to correct Lee, but of course Lee was right. Because he is the professor. Because he is the professor. <laughs> Kirby Chilton, if you had to choose to be another musician for a day, who would you be and why? It's got to be Paul McCartney because then I'd be filthy rich. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be Roger Waters so then I could tell me what to do. <laughs> Jeremy Williams, Nick, 
What is your favourite song to play live? Set the controls for the heart of the sun. It's um, based on a drum part that was uh, played by a uh, sort of bebop, oh, Chico Hamilton. I just love that thing of, of uh, playing something with mallets, and which gives us uh, gives the song a completely different feel, yeah. and it's fun to play. Yeah, Daniel Zonku, what is your favourite Pink Floyd album and why? I think I'll have answer on all of our behalfs and say Source Full of Secrets. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Julio Cosotto. Nick, although Mr. Mason is the most present element in the whole Pink Floyd epic, he never appeared on a solo Barrett record. Uh, no, just it was one of those things. I think uh, both the albums were done. One was produced by Roger and David. Yeah. One by Rick and David. Uh, did Rick? Did he produce? Maybe. Yeah, he did. definitely yeah, yeah, did yeah, something. Yeah. I just wasn't involved in, in those recordings. William Thompson. Guy. Oh. How does it feel to be out on tour again? I'm out on tour again. <laughs> uh, it feels fantastic to be out on tour again, especially with this mob. Uh, it's, it's probably it's as good fun touring as I've ever had in my life, um, if not the best. I mean, it's, it's like all the great bits of um, playing with Pink Floyd, but in a box, in a sort of nice little containable sort of thing. Yeah, A jeweled box. A jeweled oh. box, yeah. And it's, a Fabergé um, egg. Exactly. Stefano Bertazzolo. Bertazzolo. Dom, Ooh. out of Rick's parts, which one is your favourite to play? And His leg. Difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, you stop nicking my gags? <laughs> I'm just about to say them. We've got to be quick in this band. There's yeah, four gags. You? There's only got... four gags and we're all first. We'll... <laughs> he hadn't even got to the end of the question. First of all, Stefano, I'd like to apologise because actually <laughs> it's a perfectly good question, which hopefully... Don will now answer sensibly. Yeah. My favourite, my favourite part to play is probably Obscured, Obscured by Clouds. Obscured by Clouds, yeah, Obscured saying, by yeah. Clouds, I think. And you make that your own as well, really made it your own. Thank well, you. It's beautiful. You just, no, but that's, all, that's also a really brilliant kind of, I think, very underappreciated real bit of Rick as yeah. well. And people, it's not really, it's, uh, and it's true, yes, what you bring to it is fantastic. Oh, My favourite Rick you. part has got to be the big chords at the end. It's sourceful of secrets. That, see, that's a real close contender, but it's also quite difficult to play. Oh, Stefano also says, please don't let Gary start answering. <laughs> 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 yeah, sorry. Because the next one from James Cardigan, Lee, what new kit did you have to get to play these psychedelic <laughs> chants? <laughs> <laughs> what, can, can we go? go? <laughs> yeah, we will just let you go. <laughs> what was yeah. the question? How big's the hard drive? Oh, we no, got? I've lost it. Now. <laughs> what, new, what kit did you have to get? Do you want to come pick up tomorrow? Did you have to get to play those psychedelic tones? Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a secret. If you yeah. told them, you'd yeah, have to kill, yeah, them. I have to kill them. Yeah. So James yeah. Kitt wants to know what new cardigan you had to get. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's all in the fingers. Yeah. It's it a mixture of echo and slide, I suppose. All that kind of ethereal effect. Lee's got laryngitis. I have got laryngitis. Phil Gez. Nick, can you tell me a happy story from the early days with Sid? We often hear all the darker sides of Sid withdrawing from, from the band. However, you must have had some great times as friends in rehearsals or at gigs. Good question. Yeah, that's a nice question. Well, I, I won't uh, give you a happy story. What I will say is that the very first night that the Saucers played uh, to put the public in Dingwalls, I had a quite extraordinary sense of... Uh, of, of time and space, I suppose, because it was 
that sense of incredible pleasure in playing with friends and uh, playing music together. And that's exactly what was generated in 1967 when, uh, when we went out with, with Sid on board. It was, you know, for, for the first part of Pink Floyd, Sid was great company and great fun and a great character to have on stage. And that's one of the reasons why I enjoyed this so much, oh, because gonna... it's, it's very similar. <laughs> Treasure that answer. I'm afraid that's it. The hat's empty. Thank you. Thank There's you, everyone. No rabbits, no handkerchiefs, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <Black> all <laughs> nations. <laughs>